The makers of the Discovery Plus documentary series Unprecedented had rare access to the political workings of the Trump campaign, but also an unusual window into the Trump family dynamic. I think a very good father. It's been very important to me. My father was not conventionally a family man in the fact that, you know, he didn't go to our sports games or, you know, that wasn't really his thing, and he was pretty unapologetic about it. You could always spend time with him, but it was sort of on his terms. So, you know, we, we grew up with him, and it was, you know, we're walking a job site. Alex Holder is still with us, and even though we have time for a few questions, I really only have one. How in the hell did you get this kind of access to the Trump family? Was it your English accent? Because I honestly can't possibly think of what it could be. I mean, I think it was probably a mixture. <laughs> it was a mixture of the, of the English accent, maybe a bit of charm in my blue eyes. No, I, look, I, I think it was... It was it, these guys thought they were going to win the election. They thought it would be a repeat of the 2016... But hold over. on. NBC News would have sat down with them. ABC, anybody would have for months. On, they, they refused interviews all day. I, I think I asked Ivanka Trump for an interview every single day for four years. Why on earth would they give you this kind of access? I, I, only, I think it was because I wasn't American and they had sort of this deep mistrust for the American media. And I think, like you said before, I think the English accent probably helped. But also, I was saying, look, you guys have been complaining for so long, for four years at least, about the way that you've been treated by the media. So, look, I'm going to, no, I'm going to talk to you, talk to me, give me, give me this time and let's find out who you really are as people. How did you get access to them and did they think they'd have control of you? No, I don't think. I mean, there was never a scenario where they would ever have control over sort of the film or me or the editorial process whatsoever. No. And that was actually a precondition. I I'm not interested in making a film about people who control what the end result is. What was your last communication with them? Uh, my last communication with them. Um, I mean, look, you know, there's been... No, that's a, that, you're, you're <laughs> avoiding. When was the last time you spoke to Jared Kushner, Donald Trump, Ivanka Trump? The last time I spoke to them was uh, probably, well, a few months ago, I would say. Most, yeah. not most. Uh, several of the other people who were called to the January 6th committee, we know, were spoken to or pressured by Trump allies. Did Trump's team reach out to you when you were speaking to January 6th committee? I'm not going to answer that question. Why? Because, you know, due to sort of the sensitivities and the fact that there's sort of security concerns, um, yeah, I'm going to keep quiet on that. So that's a no comment. That is a no comment, yes. Interesting. Um, you started filming them a year and a half ago. What was your goal versus what you ended up making? The, the series has got two narratives, and I think in some ways, look, we've obviously never expected in a million years for them to you know, essentially incite a you know, riot that was intended to sort of destroy the, uh, the American sort of democratic system. I mean, look, we wanted to find out who this family was, who these people are, what's the dynamic between them, the interaction they have with each other and with their father. And separately to that, also follow the trajectory of the election campaign and see what the result of that would, you know, would, would be. And what we basically found out is that the only thing that matters, and I hope people watch the series and will come to this conclusion, is that the only thing that matters is the brand. That's it. It's the brand. It's the Trump, Trump brand. The Trump brand. That's what matters. That's at the forefront of everything they do. It's all about making sure Trump wins at all costs. And they don't feel that the Trump brand is tarnished, damaged, destroyed in any way? No. And in fact, all they do is ensure that it just continues to be this icon, this important, powerful thing in their minds. And I think the idea that it might be tarnished or not is completely separate to their reality. So how did you end communications with them? When did you end filming? I mean, it was after he lost. That whole family still thought, we're victorious, we won? Well, I mean, this is the thing. The, the kids never really sort of separated themselves, at least with me, from their father's position, right? They may articulate it slightly differently, but at the end of the day, they always supported what he did. I mean, Eric just sort of doubled down entirely. I mean, he come, his, the, his comparison or his explanation as to why his father won was because there were more people at his rallies then at Joe Biden's. That was the Did you say to him, that's not how voting works, sir? So my, my way of dealing with these, with these guys was that I'm not here to change their minds or to debate with them or to be prosecutorial. You know, my approach was to capture what they were saying and what they were thinking in that moment and to allow an audience to come to their own conclusion as to whether or not what they're saying made sense or whether it was ridiculous. All right, then I know we're out of time. Given all that you know, 
Do you think John, Donald Trump is at all responsible for what happened on January 6th? I, I think it's impossible to argue that he isn't responsible for what happened on January 6th in that he essentially said to 75 million people that voted for him that their vote didn't count. He then asked them to go to the Capitol. He then says on stage that they need to march down Pennsylvania Avenue and they need to fight like hell. I mean, what does anyone think is going to happen next? Wow. Alex Holder, congratulations on this docuseries, this project. Four weeks ago, you had a very different life than you have today. I appreciate you Thank joining. Thank you very much. I really Pleasure. appreciate it. Thank you.